Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's start laying over a brick. So a couple of ways you can do this. You can just do one brick down on its low profile. That's quite a nice way to work and have it running kind of horizontally across the base of the shoulder blades. Alternately, you can use two bricks in a T formation. When you do that, you bring the first brick lengthways and instead of being on its low, it's on its medium profile. And it's going to run instead of across the blades, it runs between the blades. Then take a second brick above. I like to just start with it on its high end. And that's for the head. So you just lay yourself down. Sometimes it takes a little bit of fiddling to get the bricks just so. And let it go. Now any shape you like with the legs, just depending on how the back and the hips are feeling. Soles of the feet to the floor, knees to the ceiling is going to be the most supportive frame for that, followed by legs out long, followed by easy cross, followed by soles of the feet together, knees wide. So just let it go. Let the weight of the torso really drop into the brick supports so that you feel the way that the ribs drop over the shape of the brick. You feel the way the soft tissue of the lungs this lets itself be molded somewhat in its softness and its willingness to let go. If you're on two bricks and it feels right, you can drop the brick under the head down onto its medium face if that feels right. You might like to take the arms overhead for those on one brick or those on two if they feel they've got the range in the shoulders. Just as long as you can get the arms to touch the ground or touch the brick so that you don't want the elbows hanging in space. That's a lot of strain on the arms. Let's see if you can start to direct breath into the sides of the body. All of those lateral spaces that can get tight, especially this time of year, tight from the outer hips to the outer waist, outer chest, the shoulders, the sides of the neck, even the jaw and the temples. And let's release the arms nice and slow down to the sides of the body. Use your hands to help you bring the soles of the feet to the floor and the knees to the ceiling. So just make that adjustment. Adjust your back, lift and lower the hips a little bit as you change the shape of the legs. And then hands down to the sides of the body, you might like to grip the edges of the mat, drop your elbows into the floor. We'll send the legs forward as we bring the torso upright. 
Let's cross the legs over and make our way through to all fours. We'll take one of the bricks and bring that between the heads of the thigh bones. So have it just on its narrow face and just running between the thighs, just sort of halfway between the knee and the hip. Get your hands out spread really wide and bring them underneath the shoulders. Have your index finger facing forward. Now, just a, with a little bit of energy, squeeze the brick with the thighs and drop the belly and breathe in and look up. And then really squeeze that brick and exhale all the breath and bring the body into a cow, sh a cat shape. Now puff the breath out here, press the hands down, squeeze the brick, open the lower back. Drop the belly, breathe in, look up. And then hold the breath here as well. And just pull the heel of the hand a little bit back towards the knees, and squeeze that brick and see if you can widen the sitting bones. Okay, let's take an exhalation again that we'll hold for a moment. So exhaling, 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 puff the breath out, hook the navel right up towards the back body, squeeze the brick. Can you lift the pelvic floor as well here? The brick will really help you with that. Open the lower back, drop the belly, breathe in, look up. Just do one more round of these. Can you hold the breath full, pull the hands back towards the knees, feel the shoulder blades descending, clarifying, feel the sitting bones opening. And then the last one, exhale, nice and slow. We breathe all the breath out, puff it out at the end of the out breath, hold it out and really work on hollowing the belly up squeezing the brick and lifting the pelvic floor. Good, soften the belly. Come right on through to a neutral. Let's release the brick from between the thigh bones and instead walk the knees together. Drop the hips over to the left, but as you do, keep the right shoulder moving forward. So you can't, we don't want the right shoulder to move back. Keep the right shoulder moving forward. That, that be a bit of a handbrake. Come back up. Readjust the knees. Let's go over to the other side. So hips go to the right, and we want to work that left shoulder forward. So don't let the shoulder move. Come all the way back up. Just move slowly here. I have to readjust my knees every time. They kind of get a little bit out of whack. Slowly hips to the left, shoulders don't move. Coming back up. Again, hips to the right. I want you to start looking for the hard side. The side that feels a little bit stiffer, the side that doesn't quite go so far. Okay, one more to each side, left. And up, and then right. And up. Now we're gonna do two more to our hard side or one more on each side. So slowly take it over hard side or just pick a side. And back up. And we'll do the hard side again or pick a side. And inhale, coming back up. Separate the knees to hip distance, tuck the toes and drop the buttock back to the heel. Extend the arms forwards. So get the side ribs nice and long, keep the index finger facing forward. Press the hands down and forward into the sticky mat, but with your hands, turn them out. So they stay stuck on the sticky mat where they are, but turn the right hand out and to the right and the left hand out to the left. Feel the upper arms 
respond to that and the shoulder blades. Hold that and then bring yourself through to downward dog. Straighten the legs. Deep breaths. Let's roll forward into a plank position on inhale, firm the thighs, lift the back of the knees, and then on exhale, rolling back, downward dog. Just two more like that, just a little bit of warming up in the shoulders, forwards to plank, back to downward dog. Last one, forwards to plank. And back to downward dog. Breathe in, downward facing dog. Breathe out, knees to the floor and buttock to the heel. So we're coming into a kneeling position. If this isn't comfortable for your knees, make an adjustment. So sit up on something, switch to a seat that is comfortable. Let's bring the hands in behind the back of the neck. Open the elbows nice and wide. Now take the right elbow down towards the floor, right side of the body. Just feel where it goes. Inhale, coming back up. Exhale, roll over the middle. Take the left elbow down to the left. Use your belly muscles to come up. Inhale. All right, let's start going side to side for a few rounds. I won't count it off, but... Just keep moving, not too fast, not too slow. Now, start to allow the hip to move a little bit towards the, the opposite side. So if elbows are going to the right, let the hip move a little to the left. It'll be sort of sliding over the heels. You're just starting to deepen it a little bit using the hips. And stay with it. The sides absolutely love repetition. In the gallbladder channel right in here in the spring season and the element of wood is running from the sides of the eyes to the temples, kind of does this neat little circuit around the ears, down the sides of the neck, around the shoulder blade, down the sides of the body to the outer hip. So we're just slowly winding it open here. Stay with it. Start turning the head up if you can. If the neck allows, start looking up. Lean back a little bit. Try not to let that top elbow come forward. All right. Now we're going to make ourselves, we're going to make our way around to right elbow down and the hips off to the left. Just, just kind of slowly get yourself there. And maneuver yourself down so that the left outer hip is actually sitting on the floor here. You might need to go a little bit further. Turn the head look up and wind that left elbow back and the left ribs back. Place the right hand down on the floor. So now you've got a little bit of ballast, a little bit of support. Press the right hand away from you. So it's like you're moving it to the opposite end of the mat. Feel that further open the side here. Okay, let's go further. Left arm extends up. Now roll the left ribs forwards. Bring the left arm forwards. Bend the left elbow into the, kind of into the lap. You want to feel the shoulder blade and the side of the neck here. And then on inhale, take that left arm up and back into the space behind you if you can do that with the palm up. Let's just repeat that round a couple of times, just moving space in and around the side body. The sides get really, really rigid. And over time, that rigidity through the lateral body kind of pinches off our lateral perspective. It stops us from being able to pivot fully and circumferentially in our lives. And it limits our range of what's possible. Take the left arm just over when you're ready into a standard lateral. 
and then inhale, lift yourself up. You'll be a little bit kind of off to the side, but actually we're beautifully set up for a twist. So right hand goes across the body and the left hand goes behind you as we twist left. Maybe you can bring the right hand underneath the left knee, palm down to the floor and gently lift up against that left knee. And it's a lovely turn through the whole chest to take the head and derotate it, looking over the left shoulder. A few big deep breaths here. Lean well back, if you can get it, almost like a back bend feeling in the spine. Good, and inhale. Let it go. And just tidy the hips back up onto the heels and just sit for a moment. Hands in the lap so you can get a sense of what we're talking about when we talk about this, this kind of side body or lateral or peripheral opening and just feel the left side of the body compared to the right, feel how large it feels, how much more wider out into space you can sense it and how much softer and more pliable it is maybe on an energetic level. So let's balance up. So drop the hips over to the right this time. Bring the hands back up behind the neck and we'll slowly drop into that side bend to the left. So now right side of the body starts to do the work. Turn the gaze up towards, if you can, towards sort of where the roof meets the ceiling on the right hand side of the room. And can you lift the right elbow back, right ribs back? Now keep breathing kind of deeply into the side body. It really does take time to get this channel to open. Let's drop the left hand down to the floor. Let's get some purchase on the mat. So now that you've got that support there, press the left hand away from you against the sticky mat and roll the right chest, right elbow open. Keep breathing. You can go as deep as you want through this right side. Just work with whatever is available in your body. Let's extend the right arm into the lateral. Maybe you can bring cheek to right upper arm. Rolling back. The whole time you're looking to roll back. All right. Let's bring that left elbow for a uh, right elbow forward and right ribs down. So now try and find the neck, try and find the shoulder blade. Definitely neck for me, that side. Lift it up and back about level with the shoulder palm up. You'll feel the inner arm. You'll feel different aspects of the shoulder, neck and sides. Just start rolling between these two. Try different positions with the head and just see how much you can open up through the whole of the chest, the lymphatic, the side rib, the right lobes of the lungs. So there's a lot in here. When you take the arm back, you're hitting pericardium, moving into the big blood vessels of the heart. Awesome. Let's take the right arm into a nice, neat lateral when you're ready. Now come up on your inhale. Keep your seat. Remember, we're just keeping the hips tilted over to the right a little here. And now we're twisting to the right as we bring that Bharad Vajasan in. Let's bring the left hand, if you can, underneath the right knee. If you're doing that variation, the palm is down towards the floor. And then whichever variation you've got with the left hand, right knee, 
pull up against that so that it gives the chest that of willowing back bend shape and then turn the gaze to look over the left shoulder and exaggerate the back bend feeling. So take the back of the head back and twist a little deeper. Good, and then let it go slowly. And then come back again to kneeling just for a moment. Close your eyes, hands in the lap. And see if you can press your energy out evenly to the left and to the right as you feel that expanse of how we open the physical body and it has a direct relationship to that kind of energetic field around us. It's absolutely palpable. Now let's come on through once again to an all fours shape. Turn the toes under and lift the knees off the mat, downward dog. Okay, three of these into upward dog. So we're going to space the feet out to about shoulder width. Make sure that the index finger is facing forward. Inhale, come through to this slightly wider based plank. Exhale, drop your hips behind the wrists. Keep your toes tucked, firm the buttock. And inhale, lift the chest into a variation on upward dog. Just let the spinal muscles really engage. As you next exhale, come back via plank to downward dog. Drop the heels through. Again, inhale, come through to plank with a wide base. Exhale, drop the hips down behind the wrists. And then inhale, unfurl the chest and the head. Feel the lower back. Exhale, lift the hips back up. Inhale, sink the heels. Last one, exhale, roll forwards to plank. Just kind of be slow and deliberate. Lower the hips. Uncurl the body into the back bend on the inhale. Good, exhale back into downward dog. Nice work. Step your feet back into your traditional hip width apart. Again, roll forward into plank position and we're going to come to the little toe side of the left foot. Drop the weight into the left hand. Now, nice easy version. Right foot comes about halfway along that right long edge of your mat. Just to make a nice easy version of Vasistasan. Right hand up to the roof. Turn the right palm to face the wall by the head and turn it from the shoulder blade. Then take the right arm over and lift through the right side ribs. Now that means that the left ribs come away from the floor. Turn the right cheek to the right upper arm and look up. Deep, long breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly lower the right hand to the hip for a moment. We're going to step the right foot behind us. We're going to turn this into a wild thing. Re-extend the right arm, press into the feet, find that back bend shape, take it over. Inhale. Exhale, downward dog. Take a few rounds of breath. It's kind of allowing things to settle, recover. Come forward into plank. Let's roll to the right little toe side of foot and start to weight the right hand down. Bring the left foot halfway along the left long edge. You roughly want the knee and the ankle to be in line with the hip. Take the left arm up to the ceiling so there's no hurry. Turn from the left shoulder blade, 
the left palm to face that wall overhead and then take the arm over. So you kind of lead with the little finger here. Lift through the right lower side. So you've got to pick it up. It's a muscular action. Let's see if you can move the chest back a few degrees. Maybe look up towards the heel of the hand. And then left hand to the hip, left foot steps behind you, about level with the knee, and then take the left arm back over and into that wild thing. So use the legs and the buttock to press the hips forwards. Inhale. Exhale, downward dog, bring it back. Inhale one more time here. Exhale, knees back down to the mat, tuck the toes, walk the body upright to a kneeling position. So you're in an upright kneeling position. Bring the hands behind you, interlace them, and just think about a kind of a version of the camel pose. Here, the whole side walls of the chest lift from the back of the heart around and forward and up. The toes are tucked. Bring just the left hand to the left heel. If that's not going to work today, left hand to the left low back. Right arm up and back. Half camel. Coming all the way back up, swap it over, right hand down, inhale, left arm over. Coming all the way back up, interlace the hands one more time, leaning back. If you've got it, bring both hands to the heels. Inhale fully. And exhale, let it go. Tops of the feet to the floor, buttock to the heels. We're making our way down to child's pose. And just come on through. If you need a brick underneath the forehead, bring something in. I know my body takes a while to move from back bend to forward bend. Hands down by the feet or rest the head on the fists. Or if you're in a slightly wider kneed version, you can always take the hands forward. Just let it go. So big opening through the shoulders, the sides of the chest, sides of the neck today. Can you relax the lower back here? And then gently roll yourself up. And we'll take a blanket, last posture. Take a blanket out on the mat. We're going to do a set up for Chirshasan or headstand. Some of you may feel free to take your feet off the floor. We're only going to be here for a minute or so. Um, but we're going to work the version with the feet down. But I'll give the option for the feet to come up for those who have that practice. So you want to have the blanket wide enough to take the frame of the elbows really comfortably. Um, and sometimes it can help to remove your 32 carat diamond rings. Okay, interlace the fingers right up to the webbing. Drop the forearms down to the floor and have your elbows placed right underneath the shoulders. Now, even if you've got a funky neck, we've, we've got you covered. Your feet won't be coming off the floor, so you won't be having any weight on the head. All right, tuck the chin in and it's like you're about to do a somersault. 
You drop the very crown of the head down to the floor and cup the back of the head in the palms of the hands. Okay, now as you hold that frame, press into the tips of your elbows and have no weight on the crown of your head. Like you can feel your hair touching the blanket, but there's no weight down there. And that action itself is going to open the back of the neck, open the shoulder blades. Now, you can stay right here, especially if the neck isn't great. This is actually a really good place to work. Knees are down, no weight on the head, and the focus is really in the elbows. Press the head into the hands and the hands into the head. Just create a little bit of kind of tension there. If you want to go further, and it's just an invitation, take the knees off the floor. Now try and keep the weight out of the head here. So like I said, we're not here for a really, really long time today. So it's good to build up to kind of three to five minute practice of this. Okay, those that have it might like to take the feet off the floor and move into Shirshasen full pose. Wherever you are, the action is the same. Elbow tips down into the floor. Back of the head and the palm of the hands are working together in a kind of a push-pull action. You're right on the tip or the crown of the head, not too much towards the hairline. Those who have the legs up, let's give a little bit of firm to the buttock and attempt to be gently moving the legs back in space. Easy does it. Okay, just five more breaths wherever you are, depending on your cadence. And on this fifth breath, we're going to make our way back down into that child's pose where we started. So feet down, knees down, buttocks down to the heels. Got your brick handy if you want to bring that under the forehead for your child's pose. See if you can do more of a traditional child's pose here with the knees at hip distance. Just let everything go. There's a tremendous release comes through the vertebra of the neck, the crown of the head, the temples and the edges of the eyes. Let's slowly roll up to sitting and just stay kneeling, eyes closed. That's all. It doesn't matter which one of those variations you did. The benefits, the residue is exactly the same. So notice the softness that sits around you, not only combination of opening the sides, but now of kind of opening the crown and the top. Notice the space. Maybe you, you've become conscious of 30 or even 60 centimeters around you in a field. It's that container of us, not just on a physical level. And see if you can now just visualize expanding yourself out to the left and right as if the temples and the side of the jaw, the side of the neck, the sides of the ribs, the sides of the hips, as if they could all just kind of open a little. And start to tune that peripheral vision that sits right at the outer edges of the eyeballs, the eyelids, the eye socket. 
So bringing it up from the inside out. And this enables us to see all of the possibilities, gallbladder being the channel of all those decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis. Not the bigger decisions, that's a bit more of the liver energy, but certainly those small decisions that we make all come from this peripheral being of the gallbladder channel. So feel him coming online. That's from here, just take a twist to one side, just to ensure that the neck is relieved and content. Let's come right on back to the inhale, center and exhale, opposite side. Inhale to the center and then do one more to your hard side the side that's a little bit less yielding, might be in the neck, might be in the chest. And inhale, coming back to the center. And let's take a moment here, try not to disturb this, you know, ambrosia that we've created, but just set yourself up for seated practice. So move slowly. That's why it's always good, I think, to have, have all your equipment next to you before practice. So we don't miss the richness of these moments. You may have noticed that during the side opening work, we heated up quite considerably the gallbladder channel is a wonderful release of heat and that the um, sheer shas and the headstand has dropped the temperature of the body and all these wonderful minutiae of practice whichever way you've crossed the legs just go right on ahead and cross them the opposite way Bring the wrists right into the sides of the hips. Palms up, maybe in the lap, maybe just straight out from the hips. Attempt to balance the sitting bones on the floor. And bring the front ribs in and down a little. They don't puff the chest forward. Let's not be forceful with our energy in the world. We don't need to throw ourselves into the world. We just simply need to sit and breathe and let the fruit fall into our hands. Let's take the grasping out of it. And then just start to deepen the breath. It'll happen naturally and it starts to shift into that ujjayi as you bring it under control. I know we practice a lot of the fire breathing techniques, various sequences in this class. I'm going to move into something a little softer today. So exhale all the breath and puff it out at the end of that exhalation. And inhale, raise the right hand up towards the face. And full, complete exhalation through both nostrils. And see if you can slide the, the right thumb and the right ring finger just a little higher up so you can feel the bones at the bridge of the nose. Close off both. Open the right, breathe in. Switch it over, so close the right, open the left, breathe out. 
straight up, Nadi Shodhana. In the left. Switch it over and out the right. Just continuing with this, Nadi Shodhana, in the right, out the left, in the left, out the right. Let's not make it too slow or too fast. Just try and medium pace with it. We're just warming it up. We're going to do some variations. And so the springtime energies are filled with our inspiration. And by that I mean they're filled with places where we look wide out to the fullness of the horizon. And before summer's abundant and excited growth, we can see the path from where we're at right now. And this is why we need the vision, particularly the peripheral vision, to be clear. The springtime is the one moment where we see the way forward. So it's a good time to do a little bit of planning for the year ahead, perhaps some of the larger events or things that you might want to book in and schedule like holidays or um, projects because you do really have a refinement of vision at this time. And so part of inspiration is in the quality of the inhale, what we're able to take in. So we're going to work a pratyaloma inside the Nadi Shodhana. So just keep breathing. I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to start to layer up a pratyaloma practice, which is inhalation focused in line with the spring season. So we'll, we'll begin in a moment, but the pratyaloma has We'll have you narrowing off whichever nostril you're working through. We'll be, be beginning with the right and very slowly breathing in, like trying to get that breath as slow as you can. And then we'll hold it in for a count of 10 with two locks. And then you open the opposite nostril and just relax, let that exhalation go. So this, it's an open nostril, no control. So next time you're uh, breathing out through the right nostril, puff the breath out through the mouth and clear that as end of Nadi Shodhana, beginning of Pratyaloma. Then partially open the right and slowly take it in. Maybe count of 18 or 20, hold the breath, count of 10. Two locks here. When you're ready, just open the left nostril and relax, let it go. Puff it out just a little, helps with the inhale. Partially open the left nostril, breathing in. Try and get it to a count of about 18 if you can, 15, 16, 17, 18. See how you go. You lock it down and hold it for 10. Jalandara Bandha, so the chin locks down to the chest and you bring the sitting bones together, you lift the pelvic floor, you create the Mula Bandha. You want to contain what you have inspired. You flip it over, the end of that 10 count, let the right nostril open and the breath out is soft and free and relaxed. And I'm just offering the option to, at the end of that exhalation, puff the breath out only because it gives you such lovely clarification on the following inhale. And we are inhale focused in this, these rounds. So just stay with it. 
And as you draw that breath in, start to visualize all of the wonderful things that could be taken in and have no limitation to that. It could be a wonderful, new and exciting working situation. It could be a beautiful holiday that you'd love to take. It could be something amazing in the garden that you'd like to plant or see grow or create. It could be a project that you would just love to get off the ground. Just open it up. Let anything flood in that feels aligned, that feels like it brings joy, that feels like it brings satisfaction. And you could even then as you hold the breath, just let that feeling of joy, those feelings of satisfaction that you get from that alignment, just let it kind of sift through the cells of the body like it's permeating them and moving in and becoming part of your waking self. And you let it go. You just let the breath go. Just open the nostril, soften it and let it go that little puff out at the end, that'll help you clarify. Let's work with this. Just another kind of two to three more minutes. So just for these last few rounds, when you get to that point of breath holding, after you've breathed in that clarity, you've breathed in that joy, you've breathed in that satisfaction and completion, when you hold the breath, let's switch it to a more global level. And as you hold the breath, hold in your mind a picture of the earth free of war, filled with tolerance, filled with kindness, a whole world of people that care about the planet and the environment and each other. And see if you can cast into the future a powerful snapshot of the new earth paradigm. Might be a vision of a clean, bubbling stream might be a vision of peace in places that are currently struggling to find it. It might be a vision of oneness or light. Just let it be as it is, but broadcast it out. Use all the seams that we opened up in the body today to send that visual image at the point of 10 second breath hold right out into the cosmos. This is how we become the change. And we want to wrap it back around to exhaling through the right nostril. Just take your time. We're going to round it up now. Plenty of time. 
following inhale will come in through both and after about 12 minutes of alternating the breath that's going to feel quite good and you'll exhale lower the hand just sitting eyes are closed no rush And as you sit, the completion of your practice, just allow that script, that of movie, if you like, of those new earth images to keep broadcasting out. Just for a moment, hold them in your mind's eye. Just sitting, being the change. I'm going to leave you to just round up your seated practice in, in the time that feels right for you in its natural cadence. Wish you all a beautiful day. Namaste.